Hey, good morning, everyone. It's great to see a good turnout this morning for uh, Las Vegas. My name is Tim Jefferson. I'm the Vice President of Public Cloud at Barracuda. I'm here today to introduce our speaker, Fleming Sheet. Uh, Fleming is, has been at Barracuda for 15 years. He was asked to join the company by the CEO to help launch our second product line, the Web Security Gateway. He grew that business from zero to $100 million really quickly. His next project was building uh, Barracuda's email message archiver service. And we ended up using a, a search engine before Elasticsearch, if you guys can imagine that, before Solar, and I think we ended up using Lucene. And then more importantly, uh, Fleming's team built the first SaaS-based services that Barracuda produced. So this is our email security service, our web security service, and our threat intelligence service. And in so building those product lines, we realized, Fleming's team realized that we had to build a whole host of cloud-based microservices to help support what our customers wanted and our innovation ambitions. And today's session is really about that journey of Barracuda moving from you know, four to 500 engineers who are used to building appliance-based solutions into supporting a product line that was 100% built in the cloud. And this is really about our journey and, and uh, a lot of the interesting tidbits along the way, and we got a great surprise reveal at the end. With that, I'd like to introduce our SVP of technology, Fleming Sheep. Okay. Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? I have a mic on my jacket. Good? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming in so early. It's uh, early morning. and. Uh, I'm here to uh, present the journey I have been on. Uh, because Barracuda, you guys probably seen us in the uh, airports in the past. Uh, we had boxes many years ago, and things start to transform. And the transformation is not easy, but I wanted to take you through it. But before we start, I want to actually leave this question to start. Lead with this. The network parameter is collapsing, so the concept is that network parameter is much bigger now. It's in the cloud. But try to think about this. What will your applications be in a few years? So as we see it, Barracuda, when we started in 2004, we saw on-premise use cases. As we grew, we started seeing hybrid scenarios. And public cloud is what we want to go after, because that efficiency, the unlimited amount of compute, is so much better for builders, right? So apps are on the move. So let's talk about Barracuda's journey. So when I started at Barracuda, uh, literally uh, the funding CEO, when he invited me to join the company, he gave me a box. He said, Fleming, this is a spam firewall model 300. Can you make another box out of it? Right, this is back in 2004. So you have to, I have to think outside the box to build another box. Right? That's really exciting. But back then, that was easy. We want to make sure customers can take that box and place it in their, in their uh, network and basically start getting the security they need right away. So it's application layer security. We, we, uh, we thrived on email. We thrived on web security. Also, the hardware is very much hardened. And it's a unified platform. That's why we were able to build so many boxes through the years in the beginning. Okay, and we were the volume leader multiple times, purpose-built security appliance company. 2009 and 2010, we started thinking through deployment barriers because VMware, a lot of virtual machines, a lot of hypervisors. So we actually offered VM versions of our appliances. So customers didn't have to buy the Barracuda box. They have sort of like a VCR. They put the Barracuda you know, email security stuff in there. It becomes uh, email security appliance. It put firewalls or web security gateways, it becomes a web security gateway device, right? So VM was big. And we continue to win a lot of industry awards. 2011 to 13, we start adding SaaS offerings. Uh, virtual machines became a problem also. People didn't want to have any boxes. They, we started to say, hey, you know, I don't want to maintain hypervisors because they're expensive, they use power, and you have to constantly figure out the capacity, right? And it's, it's always a problem. So we saw the opportunity to make sure we innovate 
SaaS, email security, web security. We even had a uh, mobile device management because back then when mobile was hot, people wanted to manage everyone's devices. Bring, bring your own device, BYOD, other situations. And all the way till now, adoption of microservices. So one of my, I say my role changed in 2014 when I was driving product engineering work. I switched over to technology. Why? Because I think we needed architectural transformation. By then, Barracuda already had hundreds of thousands of customers, uh, lots of devices uh, installed in the install base. I wanted to make sure those devices continue to function and function well with the latest features. So we started thinking about microservices as API first. We wanted to make sure these microservices are available all around the world. Right? So the challenge of our, around the world, back then, imagine I was in the box business, I was building stuff, right? And if you think about that, I have to go look for data centers, right? So all sorts of challenges. But with these microservices, we're supporting all the boxes that we shipped for the last 14, 15 years. We still make sure they're functional. They're still able to fight threats, advanced threats, ransomware, right? All those things. So this transformation is really uh, important for the engineers. So initially, you guys probably remember the old architecture for software many, many years ago when I started doing stuff was always three tier. There's the front end, there's the back end, there's always the middle layer. It's very simple, front end, back end, middle layer. So architecture change is basically making sure functional pieces, functional services are available API first. So everything we build has to be API accessible. And also, make sure it's containerized, it's portable, right? We still build some boxes. Customers still want some boxes today. The way we think about boxes today is just a smaller cloud. You build your software using Kubernetes, using Docker containers, and make sure they are actually portable into a box. If the customer wants it, we can put it in there, right? One nice thing about containers, I, actually my first container I used was the, something called Solaris Zones. Anyone heard of that before? Perfect. Back in the old days, then <clears throat> Linux had two roots, right? The concept is, with containers, you're even more faster, you're more performant than hypervisors because you can use the bare metal, right? So containerize, make sure it's portable. It's very important. Also, once we start building microservices, one thing I notice is engineers start moving much faster. They like continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment constantly, making changes to the service, improving it quickly instead of three months, six months, multiple sprints. The idea is we're able to move much faster. And we need to build faster. And the way I see it is that <clears throat> that time, need for speed. I think Tim is, uh, he loves race cars. <laughs> so I put this slide up. So the idea is need for speed. And there used to be a, uh, a video game I used to like when I was a kid called Need for Speed as well. The concept here is that the days of building software and toss over to the ops team, uh, it's long gone, right? So operational efficiency are be, uh, achieved from continuously build, integrate, deploy, protect, monitor, and remediate. That's how we see it. But we also want to make sure while you build fast, you continue to worry, think about distributed environments, supporting your customers, making sure it's available. And the zero trust is a big word today. Really what it means is you have to be able to rehydrate. You have to be able to reload your workloads at any time. Because at many, many situations when you have a large fleet of assets, it's hard to trust everything. You have to make sure you're able to rehydrate. <clears throat> so that said, uh, conclusion, we decided, actually my engineers, uh, we started with a few engineers <laughs> to think, let's build our stuff in the, in, uh, on AWS. <clears throat> and how did we get here? I want to run through the episodes because these episodes are learning experience for me. And I really wish that it doesn't have to be learning experience for you in the hard way. Hopefully I can tell the story and some of you guys can reflect what you have seen and maybe get to the cloud faster. So episode one, data centers. 
So we wanted to support our customers all over the world. You probably flew around airports. You have seen Barracuda ads everywhere. We wanted to promote our products and services everywhere. So need, need to have data centers in every location on, on the planet is what we are trying to do. And one of the key things here is we need contracts in the continents where customers reside, peering providers, upstream hiccups, all these things. And it takes months and months. And really, I, uh, I was waiting for months and months to actually say, hey, when can I serve my customer here? Right? Uh, let's say Sweden or Europe or Asia or Brazil. It's very difficult to actually try to find the right data centers. And you don't know if every data center is the one that you can trust. Because some, of the, some data centers I experienced one time, someone accidentally pushed the EPO. <laughs> Uh, emergency power off button. That's usually when, like, if Fleming is playing with the racks, I accidentally touch the power cord, I'm about to be uh, electrocuted, you press that button. But sometimes human errors, they press the button by accident. What happens after that? Not only they cannot turn it back on because they have to assess why that button was pressed. Is there someone actually lying on the ground in the aisles? <laughs> right? So my service is not available during that time. So big pain. I had a lot of issues. <clears throat> okay, so once we got the data centers, this is not a bridge, this is like a pier. What it means is basically, I got the data center, but uh, I need rack space, right? Because everyone is moving to the data center, and a lot of other people who need the real estate in the data center, they, will, they might grow faster than we are. So at, at certain situations, I run out of rack space. Again, weeks and weeks of figuring out which section do I go to, where the network drop will be in, right? Whether the power is enough in that situation. Actually, I will talk about that. <laughs> power consumption. Okay, so I was trying to be clever. I say, okay, so since I build stuff with microservices, I, with Docker containers, with Kubernetes, I probably don't need hardware versions of everything. I just run a bunch of hypervisors or Docker container servers, right? The problem with that is they came back to me and said, Fleming, we measured your CPU. Guess what? Your rack can only be half full because your CPU is eating up too much power. So in that situation, I was like, really? OK, I have to switch hypervisors. I have to retest, right? Uh, lots of issues. That's weeks and weeks lost again. So this is a big lesson, by the way. So don't forget power is actually really expensive also. <laughs> Then I thought, OK, I got the right hypervisors now. And what I really wanted to make sure, can you guys still hear me OK? Yeah? Thumbs up? OK. So hypervisor agility, what it means is, OK, so I got a hypervisor with a bunch of systems uh, running on it. Uh, let it be containers, let it be VMs. The problem with that is, OK, now I.O. becomes a performance bottleneck. right? I run out of space. Actually, one of my key microservices, I was supporting tens of thousands of customers already at that time. We needed more space. And guess what? The hard drive in the device is fixed size. So in order to do that, we have to turn off a bunch of clusters and make sure we, we're uh, replicating and backing up, then expand the size of the hard drive, then continue. Again, months and months of efforts. So I feel like... This is really tough, right? It felt like elephant, you know, moving so slowly. Not cool. So, breaking point. This is, uh, you will see this next slide, you will probably laugh at me. We actually ran out of cables. I'm not joking with you. And what's really crazy is, I was so pissed. So every meeting after that, the first slide I showed the Amazon Prime member showing cables for $25, right? For 10 cables. How do we run out of cables? Unbelievable. So I asked myself, is this ever going to end? I, I unfortunate answer that I was expecting, probably not, right? Because that cycle keeps on going. Remember, at this time, Amazon's being, AWS is being around since 2006, so it's been around for a while, right? And we have been very successful in supporting our customers with boxes, VMs, SaaS solutions. 
I, I couldn't believe that I couldn't build anymore. If I don't switch my mentality, switch the engineering's thinking, I think the future is really, really dark for us. So at that point, I came up with this conclusion. Friends don't let friends build data centers. Anyone agree with me? Right? No more data centers. Guess what? Someone else does it better. But one thing, security and compliance postures are very important. So one nice thing about AWS is they support you on layer one, two. They have all the security, physical security, all the biometric, everything taken care of on their side. And it brings you a lot of compliance, right? So I, one other thing I didn't want to mention is just actually legal related things if you build data centers, it's really tough. So we gotta keep thinking about security and compliance. There are a series of questions, right, before we get there. Where's everything and how are they related? When are you putting the cloud? They're all over the world, right? You have so many regions. And who has access to what? That's another question. How do you handle incidents? When something happens in the past, you know, you can just unplug the power, hey, I'm safe for, for now, right? But you can't do that. What about data privacy issues? Where data resides, right? Those are the questions. The other thing I thought of is, I'm being a builder myself uh, for many years. I would say low visibility on developer activity, especially when you go fast. And uh, I feel like that's my CIO, uh, CISO in the office, can see everything. How are we asset tracking for each application? Is there a concept of dev, staging, and production? Remember the old days, dev, staging, production. <laughs> Those days. Where, why are we getting abuse reports? Wow, okay. Building fast has consequences. So I still have more episodes. Abuse reports. This is crazy, right? So I, saw, I solved all the world's problem. Now I have a budget to spend in AWS. Let's go. Uh, how many of you guys have heard of abuse reports? or experienced one. Not in the fun way, usually I feel like sometimes when I drive fast on the freeway, uh, that feeling when the cops catches you, catches you in your rear uh, view mirror, the red light goes on, whew, I feel like a little nervous. What, what happened? So actually, it happened three times in 30 days. Because <laughs> we have so many engineers, they're all like, oh wow, Fleming, this is really cool. Let's build in AWS. When you're building AWS, sometimes you're not careful because you might have to catch uh, you know, a dinner date or something. Then you start something, then you go, then come back. Your, your VM might actually be compromised, right? So conclusion there is we need to watch over the builders via management and control plane natively in the platform. Governance with CIS benchmark with, and provide auto remediation. How many have you guys heard of, I mean, how many of you guys have heard of CIS Benchmark? That's great, because in 2016, I was at the show as attendee, I was listening uh, about this. It's very important. Also, remember Barracuda's heritage is application layer security. Application layer requires a lot more in-depth assessment of the traffic, the packets, everything, right? So that means, Next generation firewall, cloud generation firewall. It means web application firewall, which is a reverse proxy that examines all the requests as well as exiting response. So workloads are easy to spin up, but flows in out of your application still need protection, right? So we need to secure the data in transit. Think about data in that state, in transit. The data plane. Security for data at rest is also important because in the old days, as I mentioned, you have front end, back end, and database or middle layers. A lot of the data gets actually stored. A lot of applications are built with the web front, now with S3 buckets in the back end to support the object stores, right? So how do I guarantee the data my application is actually in Amazon S3, Amazon Simple Storage, service, I like S3 a little more, <laughs> easier, but how, how do we make sure it's clean? So we need to protect the S3 buckets with 
mis uh, with, from misconfiguration as well as malware. Why malware? Because applications, when you're exposed to the world, you might take a file coming in from the internet, right? Imagine if I build a, a, a job site that I want to exchange resumes for my customers, they might be uploading documents. And guess what? Ransomware sometimes comes through documents. So secure data at rest with Barracuda ATP. That's one of the microservices which drove me to the cloud. Advanced threat protection. And Amazon Macy, which is a native control in Amazon to allow you to classify your data in S3 buckets. So, hybrid. I had another issue. Even we had the awesome AWS compute, storage. I need a network. I need a network that I can rely on. So I need a strong mesh of service regions to support our customers. This is not about just doing a load balancer. This is about my databases can actually do replication. Uh, you know, basically the idea is if I'm in Asia, my customers are looking at a particular threat, I want to make sure at first order, if I already know about the threat, I want the information to be available in Asia, right? So it required a very strong, very stable, very expandable network. So what did we do? We actually built the Transit VPC with the Barracuda Cloud Generation Firewall. And that interconnects with your on-prem boxes as well, on-prem data centers, because uh, guess what? When it, as much as I want to move everybody to AWS, we still have data centers, right? So you need to interconnect and make sure that migration is smooth. So AWS and Barracuda better together. In short, I wanted to ask you guys a question. I think there are two personas that are moving to the cloud. Some of us, some of us don't have beard. I'm, I don't grow beard, I'm oriental. But <laughs> builders and risk professionals. How many of you guys are builders you built? Wow. How many of you guys are security guys, like those builders? Yeah, it's about 50-50, right? Yeah, so actually I have a guy in my team. His name is Jonathan. He's a builder. He looks exactly like that. So with the beard, it's not red. <laughs> and I know a buddy, Simon, who runs our IT. He doesn't wear a tie, but he's pretty serious. So one thing I wanted to talk about this is the builders have diff, you know, their model then the security guys have their model. Security guys like to make sure the flows are good, configurations are good. Builders like, I want to go fast, I want to do uh, infrastructure as code, maybe someday security as code, right? And I think Barracuda is here to make that happen and make sure there's harmony between these two groups. Why? Because I think Yin Yang is a great example, great simple to show the builders are going fast, but you got some soft power to make sure someone's watching over them. We need that balance. Moving to the cloud is not easy. We need to make sure the builders don't go out of control. We want to make sure security guys don't put too much control, right? Because then everything slows down, like my experience. Because they can also control Amazon environment. It can be painful. So two personas. Builders versus IT professionals. There's a natural friction between building fast and staying secure. What can Barracuda do? One of the things I always say, Barracuda will innovate. We innovate at the time, at the right time, when the customer needs it. So Barracuda is ready to do this with our security expertise in data playing and working with native controls on AWS. Because I believe in the old days, it's Mac versus PC. Today. It's about the new set of platforms that's available. It's all computers, right? So the new platform on AWS, AWS built the platform. We built software, especially security software, on top of that platform. That's how we see it. So I'm going to wish for the best for the demo gods. I'm, I was told to press this button. Ready? Ah, there you go. So this is, that's not the demo, by the way. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to show you is a demo of something that I put together for the great progress that we have made on this uh, platform we were building for security. 
So this app is a really simple app that I made just for fun because sometimes I still want to geek out. You know, It's a web app. It runs on Tomcat. And what I did is I actually built it on Elastic Beanstalk. You guys have used it, right? right? Perfect. So it's very simple. It basically takes a file upload and extracts it from do post. And what I do is I build out an Amazon uh, you know, S3 client that basically puts in my US East region on this bucket called uh, RIDA demo. RIDA is reinvent demo app. I'm not very creative. So the concept there is very simple. If it's successful, it sends me an email and say, hey, Fleming, here's a file I share with you. So I want to play that effect for you guys, right? So it's already deployed. Let's go look at the, I call the bare naked version. Why is it bare naked? Because it's not protected, I'll tell you later. So we'll start with this one, RIDA. So boom. So let me talk about this app a little bit. So remember, as I mentioned earlier, applications are built with web fronts and some S3 buckets. I built my little app like that. And really what it is, is I want to demonstrate, start here, choose a file. I have bad stuff. Let's start with the bad stuff. This is a document. Don't open that document, but I can upload it. I will send it to me since I just, I can defend these things, yeah. Uh, click on upload, boom. All right, so that file went in, and uh, I, if uh, SES is working efficiently, I should get an email shortly. Let's do another one. Let's do some good stuff. Okay. One of the things I have to read so many times is this document. It's called the AWS reInvent 2018 Exhibitor Rules Guidelines. <laughs> There's a lot of rules. Boom. Send that over. Okay, so it's already running. So let's see. There's a couple of things I wanted to, to, to show you guys. Ooh. Yeah, so SES is working pretty efficiently. So this is... Uh, this is a document. By the way, Bruce Lee is uh, really cool. So you see, I would try my hardest <laughs> to be like Bruce Lee when I was a kid. Rehydrate, sorry. Uh, the other thing, oh, see, another document just showed up. So my app is working. So that's the guidelines. So click on this. Okay, so if you guys want to read through this, it's pretty, pretty long. It's tough to be an exhibitor. <laughs> Uh, next one. So the other thing I want to show you real quick is we, we got notification hooked up. I will show you how all this is actually connected later on. But you guys use Slack? Everyone use Slack? Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, uh, so you can see, uh, by the way, I called this little product that we're playing with uh, Project Guardian Angel. The reason I wanted to call it Project Guardian Angel is because I always believed someone watching over the builders. But the actual official name, remember, is Cloud Security Guardian. Cloud Security Guardian. So the reason I had to explain is there's a baby with the little angel thing on there. So this is basically the file that I believe is bad. Let's see what happened. Let's go see what I did. Today, run reports. Ah. I have, have that heuristic score. So this is being scanned by ATP. So I, I want to touch on that ATP a little bit. ATP Barracuda have built is multi-layered. Uh, a lot of uh, ATPs out there are sandbox only. The problem with sandbox only is really slow, so it can't support the volume Barracuda has to work with. So we built a multi-layered uh, ATP, which has static analysis, heuristics analysis, as well as sandboxing as the sort of the last line of defense. So let's go back to the email real quick. So I have showed you that one. Okay, if demo gods with me. Okay, cool. See, I could not access that file from S3 bucket. We didn't delete the file. We programmatically changed the permission. When we identified it's actually a threat, 
right? So what we did is we made, made it so people can't read it because it's dangerous. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. So that's the naked version. Let's go look at the, uh, a situation where, actually, why don't I do this? I'll go show you a little bit about the product, the Cloud Security Guardian product. So Cloud Security Guardian is designed, remember, to work with native controls. And also, at times, if advanced security controls are needed, we'll instrument them programmatically. So if you go look at this particular uh, situation, policies, I can actually try to deploy a, uh, a new WAF because I want to make sure my little app is protected now. So let's just make it, make sure I call it demo one, something. Port 80, I have my Chishi here, boom. Come on, IP address. Okay, so add that policy. Right, and when you need to deploy it, you just click on deploy policy, uh, call it demo, and demo app protector, uh, WAF, deployment targets, put it into my app, and region, have my cheese, oh, actually, can do Asia, Ohio. VPC is, let's do that. Okay. Hang on one second. It's not doing the right thing yet. Okay, one second. Let me do this again. Region. This is two. You see, that's the one. Matches my number there. And D11. Auto scale. Put my address in there. Boom. And we just deploy. So it saves a lot of time from going to the, uh, you know, try to get your instance installed and all that. It all programmatically happens. So while it's doing all the deploying, I want to show you the version that's already protected. Remember how I was able to upload the malware? that went into S3 bucket, get detection, email, then I protect it from actually clicking on, right? So now, let's go to the one that actually is already running. I will show you uh, the admin interface. So let's try to upload the same malware again. Fast stuff. Boom. Okay, I need the email. Boom. So which means you now have protected your application already with this WAF. It identifies as a threat. Why this is important? Because S3 buckets are always very big. We want to give the customer the opportunity to protect the traffic when it, on the way in. So that way, you don't ever have to make it to, the best of shouldn't make it to the S3 bucket. Does that make sense? Cool. The other things I want to show you, because earlier I talked about uh, uh, basic CIS, right? And I wanted to show you some of the policies that we have put together. I can show you this policy. These are CIS benchmarks and PCI as well, right? And I actually, before today, I had to make sure I had some examples to show you at the demo. Actually, last night, I created a whole bunch of these. Okay, remediate on the portal. Let's say last 24 hours, right? See, all these are situations that's basically, that's out of compliance on my environment. So someone, basically the, 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 watch, the guardian is watching over your environment constantly. And to fix it, you can remediate uh, automatically or you can follow the manual steps, right? Great, and also getting to here is very easy. So adding a account, it's very straightforward. You literally have just to have to launch a, a little stack that we basically produce and put it in your environment. If you're logging into the console and basically picks up and use a cross account uh, a role to actually access everything. 
So basically, that's the um, little demo I wanted to show you guys. And what's important to think about here is everything is programmatically done. Security needs to be automatic, needs to be seamless, right? And that, that way, the builders don't get embarrassed uh, the next day if there's something goes wrong, because we can actually solve these problems. And the guy who can actually click on remediate during uh, you know, the incident like that also feels good, because they are part of the whole uh, movement to the cloud. So thank you, demo gods. Uh, what do you guys think? OK? Cool. I'm moving to, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so the next thing, it's really embrace cloud native controls. I want to talk about the conclusion here is Barracuda can integrate and deploy AWS native controls and services. Uh, Amazon GuardDuty, Macy, as I mentioned earlier, and also apply our security expertise at the right time and at the right place. And be prescriptive with advanced security controls because you don't need a big box. You don't need to figure out how to put a big firewall in, in the flow. You need to figure out how to utilize the right features for the right problems to solve, right? So I think this is really good to leave with you. Trust, but verify, because think about the two personas. Inspect, but not disrupt. Do not disrupt. Try to figure out how to solve the problem without disrupting, right? Remediate, but moderate. If you do too much automation, it could turn into Skynet. It can be like going out of control, right? So moderate. Security needs to be complete and easy to use. And really, uh, left with the question for you guys, do you want to build fast and stay secure? Check out Barracuda's uh, booth at booth 2029. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I'm open for questions. I have two of uh, my engineers and product manager here. Uh, Sunil is here. And myself will be also open for questions. And one thing not to forget, please complete the session survey. And think about your journey to the cloud. Think about those two personas. Think about what we're building to make those two personas work together better. Thank you, guys. <laughs>